So we're at the login page. We logged into our, our admin section. Now we're going to add products. So we're going to select add products. We're going to say products. Let's make this uh, PMW and price. Let's put in a price and hit add products. Now what happens here is that field cannot be null according to the database. But because we set up this pick one, pick one doesn't have a value. So if the person forgets to pick one, they're not going to be able to enter the database. So this is going to prompt them to pick one. Autos, PMW, and let's put the price, and hit add products. Now, we chose not to have it go to another page. We simply want to add products as quickly as possible. So now I can go to autos again. Let's pick Ford. Let's pick a price. Add products. Let's pick uh, planes. Let's pick 747. Price. Add products. Let's go to boats. Big, red, sailboat, and let's put on the price and add products. Now, where are these products going? Very good question. The products are going to the database with a correct category because this category has been pre-populated from the e category table, which is a record set inside of Dreamweaver. So if we go to our database, and we go to products, we can see that we now have products. These are products. Okay, now, very important step here. We added these products, but somehow the person who entered these products was off by a whole digit. This is supposed to say 34,000, 45,000, 56,000. So, how do I know who made this mistake? So, let's say you have 10 people working for you. How would you possibly track this person? So we're going to track the user's entries. So as an example, if you're on Facebook, you make an entry, that information gets tracked. All database systems work the same way. So what we need to do here, we need to create a new field to capture the person's email address. Okay. So how can we do this? Well, we need to go to structure, structure of my table. Right now we're browsing the table. Now we need to go to the structure of the table. Okay, structure of the table. Based on these choices, these are my choices for my interface. We're going to add a field after the date field. After the date field, we're gonna go and we're gonna call this user ID which is basically going to be the person's email address. We're going to say user ID is going to be variable characters, 75 digits, because that's how we set up the email for the admin section. So again, when we come down here, we don't hit go, we hit save. Now, now we have a place to store the information. A second ago, we did not have the place to store the information. So browse, Browse now, this place is empty. Okay, so now we're going to go back to Dreamweaver. Okay, so now we're back inside of Dreamweaver. Now, important step here this form that we created originally does not have a way to track the user. So we need to change that. So, this is a four step process. The first thing we need to do is go to the database, which we just did. In add a field to hold that user ID, which is going to be the person's email address. Next, inside this form, any place inside this form, I'm just going to pick the section right here. So inside this form, we're going to put a hidden field, a hidden field. We don't want the person to be on the honor system here. We want to track the person's information because if they're making mistakes, they're going to put in somebody else's email address. So the only way, so let's think about this logically, the only way to get to this page is through logging in. Once you log in, I can track your information. Just like Facebook or Amazon or anything that requires a login, they can capture your information. Very cool stuff. 
So we're going to select this part any place inside the form won't work. We're just going to put the hidden field right here. We're going to go to insert form in field. Now that puts the hidden field icon right here. Now generically, generically this hidden field is called hidden field. We're going to call it what it is, which is the user underscore ID. Now, because the person logged in to get to this page, we can track their information by setting the default value to be their email address. So because we have a record set called admin for this page, we can track the person who logged in. So step two, step one was to add the field to the database. Step two was to go to the insert menu, insert form, form hidden field. Then we name the hidden field. Now we're going to map it to something. We're going to click this little lightning bolt here. We're going to bind it to the which record set. We're going to bind it to the admin record set. More specifically, we're going to bind it to the person's email address. So down here, it's going to echo that information. It's going to capture that information. I'm going to hit OK. Make a change. Save a change. Now, the fourth step to this, if we were to run this, if we were to publish this form right now, it's not going to capture the information. It's going to capture the information, but it's not going to write it to the database. So that's the most important step here. I want to take that person's email and map it to the database. So when I created this form to begin with, in a previous chapter, we went to wizard, insertion form wizard to create this form. So that created this server behavior called insert record. Insert record was created from the insertion form wizard. We're going to double click this form. Double click. Okay, now user ID doesn't have a value because we just created the user ID, which is my hidden field. So based on these choices, category has a value, product, product name has a value, but user ID at this point doesn't have a value. So you have to do this yourself. So based on these choices, we're going to map the user ID to have the value of user ID. So I hit OK. And I save. File save. Make a change. Save a change. So now I'm going to upload to the server. So file upload command shift U. Dependent files. We didn't have any changes to our dependent files, so I can say no. So now we're back to the web server. So now I'm back at the web server. So now when I refresh this page here, the return key to refresh the page, and I'm going to say trains. And we're just going to put in name for train, gg1. We're going to say this price and hit add products. Then go to autos. Let's put in Audi and add products. Now we can track, we've tracked the user. So in this particular case, Jennifer has logged in. So Jennifer is the one writing these records to the database. How do I know that? So if I go to the database, back end database, and I go to products, I can now see that these products were entered by Jennifer because here's Jennifer's email address. Pretty cool. Now, important step here. If you have a lot of employees and they're not using company email addresses, you're going to be guessing as to which user that is. So you can track their first and last name. You can basically track anything from the record sets, anything inside admin you can track. You can track their first name, last name, birthday, picture, any information that's stored inside of a database can be reused again and again and again. So how cool is this? This basically enables you to track the user. So as an example, when you go to Facebook and you basically have a friend, that friend is tied to your user account. It's a very simple process. When you buy music, say you buy music, John Coltrane, 
people who bought John Coltrane, it may say that people bought Miles Davis and Tony Monk and Charles Mingus because the John Coltrane record has been tagged with those other names. Miles Davis, Thelonious Monk, Charles Mingus, etc., etc., etc. So this is the basis of all databases. All databases work this exact same way. So we've tracked the information, we edit the field, and have fun with this. Very, very, very cool technique. See you soon.